I want to talk to you about Lincoln Riley, but before uh, I ask you, I want to give you, uh, because I'm not sure that you've seen this, Lincoln was asked about this Browns opening uh, today there in Norman, uh, and he said, I knew that question was coming. He says, the truth is for me, I love Oklahoma. I love coaching here. I love coaching college football. I certainly don't have that itch right now. Riley in the midst of his second season there replacing Bob Stoops at OU and very much in the thick of a, a playoff race uh, in college football and a national title hunt for the Sooners. What do you make of Lincoln Riley and the potential of making a jump to the NFL? Well, first of all, I remember, you know, Nick Saban and that whole thing with the Miami Dolphins saying what he said, and we know how that story ended. Yep. So I wouldn't read too much <laughs> into words right now, although I would say it's probably unlikely that Lincoln Riley would end up leaving Oklahoma where he's he's got it pretty good right now, Rhett, with a, with a great football program, making a lot of money and a lot of job security. But if there was an NFL job that would intrigue him, I would think it would be with a player in Baker Mayfield he knows so well and you have something to build around there. And I would imagine John Dorsey is at least going to place that phone call once the time is right to gauge the interest there of Lincoln Riley. He's somebody the entire NFL has been obsessed with, going to visit with him in the offseason, team after team, coordinator after coordinator, trying to get some ideas from Lincoln Riley. So in an area where we see what Sean McVay is doing offensively, what Andy Reid is doing offensively, Offense is probably the way this will end up going for John Dorsey. Remember, his background with the Green Bay Packers is in hiring offensive coaches. So right. uh, that's where I definitely think they would look. And when you look at, at the college game, you know, not on the offensive side, Nick Saban's not going to take this job. Urban Meyer, although it's been a, a tumultuous year for him, I don't see him going that direction. Uh, Dabo Sweeney's going to stay in the college game. I don't see that happening. But a couple college names I'll throw out to you, along with Lincoln Riley, to keep an eye on. David Shaw, everybody kicks the tires on David Shaw at Stanford to see if he would be interested in becoming an NFL coach. I would imagine that phone call will take place. And one other one, there's a guy down in Ann Arbor who was popular, then he wasn't hey. popular, and now he's got something <laughs> going. Selfishly, I would love to see Ohio embrace Jim Harbaugh with the Cleveland Browns. That's something I'll throw out there. All right, throw that one out there. Maybe we can chew on that a little further on the aftermath later today. 2.30 Eastern time, bonus half hour uh, for you of the aftermath. And before I let you go, DJ, one more question, because you yeah. kind of touched on it a little bit with the background uh, of the offensive ingenuity that Lincoln Riley has and now the integration of a lot of those college principles into the NFL game on offense. How much really does that play into effect and make these Lincoln-Riley type candidates more viable as NFL coaches? Well, it seems to be the way the league is going, and I definitely think they will reach out to those types of candidates. But one other name, I, a lot of times in these hires, you hire people within the division, uh, maybe somebody that's been successful within that division. We've seen the Browns do it a number of times. The name I would keep an eye on here is Mike Munchak, who has done a phenomenal job with that offensive line, with that group there, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and is as well-respected a coach as we have in the NFL. And just watching that tape from this last week, watching that Browns offense, they have got to get better up front. If you hire a guy like Munchak, I think that would definitely be something he could take care of.